Assalamu alaikum. I'm Sakana Hussain Ibrahim and uh, I'm from Pakistan. Uh, I'm working as a resource and remedial therapist and, and working as an ABA therapist. I recently passed my RBD exam and I'm a teacher trainer and lead trainer where I uh, restore our teachers and parents and actually provide them guidance about the children or adults teaching, those who are struggling in learning or academics. So basically, you can say that I'm working as a trainer as well, and I'm working as an ABA and remedial therapist as well. Uh, that's all about me. And my today's topic is art and play, the key to a happy childhood. All right, so let's start with it. What do you think about art and play? What is the importance for you? Before that, I would request you all to keep your pads, paper, uh, paper pad or notebook with you and pencil. Because at the end, I'm going to do a little activity where I want you to be there and end up on a good note. Because art is said to be therapeutic, right, in nature. And it's not only for children, but for adults, it works as therapy. So let's start and I'm waiting for you all to get ready. Art and play is said to be the key to a happy childhood. Why? What's the reason behind? All right, art and play, the key to a happy childhood. Let's see. Play is the answer to how anything new comes about. Jen Piaget. So when you have seen children flying, what do they do? They just uh, roam around, they take part, they just involve themselves. Sometimes they are playing alone and sometimes they are playing in a group. It depends on age as well, which we are going to see in our next slide. 
it's answer how anything new comes out. They keep on building different things, keep on building different uh, structures. Sometimes you will see them engaging in Legos. Sometimes they are with dolls, specifically if you talk about girls. But now we say we are not supposed to emphasize on girls because doll is going to, if a boy is playing with doll, it's totally fine because you might raise to an empathetic boy and a good father and a person and a boy who's more respectful towards women. So it's, of course, the answer towards something new to be explored. Okay, activity. The first activity is close your eyes and think about your childhood. For one minute, you'll close your eyes and think about your childhood. Now recall the best part about your child. So I really want you all to just close your eyes for a minute and recall what was the best about your childhood. And let's see. Okay, so if you ask me my best childhood memory, let me start. My childhood, best childhood memory was when I used to make a doll house with uh, empty cartons and used to decorate it. That was the best part about my childhood. And, and there was a little boy at that time. Uh, at that time, the Barbie was just introduced. The Barbie was just introduced to a uh, like let's say in America, US. So my uh, one of my uncle got that to me and I used to sew the different dresses for her and used to dress her up. That was something which I always think whenever somebody asks me about my childhood, it takes me towards that time. Okay, so I'm sure you must have recalled your childhood as well. It must be something amazing. What is play? Play allows children to use their creativity while developing their imagination, dexterity, and physical, cognitive, and emotional strength. Why it is important? The question is why we uh, put so much emphasis on play. Play allows children for healthy brain development. It is through play that children at a very early age engage and interact with the world around them. If you talk about children's world, it's very small. Initially, when they are born, it revolves around their immediate family, their parents. I mean, it's within the house until unless they start going to the school. After that, their life is uh, they their life phase enters in the school. When they go to school, their life or their world is extended a little bit, and now their life is with schoolmates and the teachers other core teachers and of course they learn and explore more with the teacher so if we talk about teachers importance that while developing the cognitive skills that they pay the most emphasis on that of course you as a teacher or a parent you play a very important part in developing that thing so try to interact with your children while they are playing try even at home do not ignore this thing because play is something which cannot be ignored. And do not think that this is something like they are going to waste their time. It's any age, they are not going to waste their time. They are, inter even if they are silent, if they are quiet, they are still 
their brain is already working there it's already engaged in something they are imagining uh, imagining something so for healthy brain brain development it is very important to give them the time to play uh, even if you ask me what i would like to play even now today if i'm sitting with my students i love to play i just sit with them and i always keep 10 to 15 minutes extra for them to interact with me to play mostly i use blocks because they are really amazing and they they come up with different structures by building anything yesterday only one of my students he made a dinosaur then slowly and gradually that dinosaur turned into like expanded one like dinosaur then a papa dinosaur then the mama dinosaur and the dinosaur itself it was amazing and the way he was explaining it was outstanding so of course this is how his imagination was to play is to learn many of us think that we have uh, the playing while playing child is wasting the time we should focus on studies or academics no when they are playing they are learning they are learning to connect with others. They are learning to socialize. They are learning to be empathetic towards others. They are learning to smile. And they learn a, a lot more. Because when they interact with other children, they we all have different nature, right? So when they are talking with each other, they are developing their certain skills. They learn new vocabulary as well. You must have observed that during your class or at home as well. Okay, now types of play. Before start, I start types of play, I would uh, like to give credit for this slide to Dr. Sajda Hassan. She's a child psychologist at Husseini Foundation. I've done many of my courses from there. And she's a great lady, of course, and a great mentor. And so there was something very important for us to learn sometime parents or teachers really worry that why this child is like playing alone or why he's a bit aggressive towards other kids. So let's see the reasons. So if you see from zero to two years, and by the way, by while talking about two years, uh, two years, when we talk about two years, two till nearly four years, we see the terrible twos as well, while the child is throwing tantrums and uh, crying, yelling, especially when you're taking them to malls, they would lie down on the floor and yell it and you will feel embarrassed. No, it's fine. It's part of their de development as well. When they are exploring, when things be become overwhelming for them. So zero to two years, it's the solitary play, right? The play type is solitary. Child plays by himself and has little interaction with others. Very little action, maybe looking at them, maybe like change the side and start doing their own play. If you have seen the children, they will focus when they are born, their focus is not so much. Gradually, they listen to the things, they look into the things, especially if you're moving the crackle or the key, they would look into that and they will give you a deep smile, right? So, the zero to two years, they like to play alone or they would interact a little, maybe. So, when now the age comes in 2 to 2.5 years and remember that we always can keep a margin of six months prior right so it's okay if the time has been extended now the child is spectators now he's watching now this is the uh, age where we normally put our children are into schools right now, what you'll see when they are like 18 plus children and they are in pre-nursery, uh, you'll see that the child is standing by other child and watching him playing, right? So maybe he's learning, maybe he likes that play. Or maybe he'll just go there, watch it for a while and come back to its place and start playing his own. So it means he didn't get something. Or if he's standing for a long, long time, it means he was really attracted towards that. He watches as the other children play, but does not play with them. He would just a silent spectator. Okay, now 2.5 to 3 years. Now it's go parallel, side by side. They would play next to each other. Like, let's say I've given blocks to two of the children. 
all right they are playing with their own blocks i have kept a bundle of blocks over there and they would take few and they will make their own things they are not going to interrupt each other so this is parallel they are playing side by side they would be placed next to each other but does not play together with them okay so that's the parallel play now three onwards now they have learned they have exposed the world around them and now they are three to four years they are associating with others around them okay so that third part where the school in school they started going to kindergarten now they have learned they have made the friends so of course after you know, making the friend what they do they start to interact with certain preferred friends only during play have you ever seen your child saying that uh, my so and so friend wasn't there so i didn't in, uh, like uh, i didn't like it i was uh, upset because that friend wasn't there he was on holiday he took an off but it happens right uh, i don't think there is no, something to worry about because this is the time they make certain if you ask to do friendship with the that specific person they would say no my friend is this one so it's okay now the association is being started now for to 6 plus now 6 plus means there is no age bracket after 6 plus it can include us as well because I, as i said we love to play so it's a corporate play plays with shared aims and fully interacts with other now is the time they have planned something and they are going to make something huge let's take an example of we have in a primary class we start giving children with different projects to make something together and they are going to like a small group we are going to divide them into different group and they are going to decide what they are going to make and again i would take the example of the blocks like a group of four children are sitting and they are in different groups in different setting and they are making different things they are going to design something plan something and now they will start now there the cooperation is there they are going to cooperate with each other in building something amazing it could be a joint art as well taking a big chart paper provide them a big chart paper and ask them to draw something big we call it a big picture next slide Let's watch the video it will tell you about the types of play in detail Today, we are going to learn about the six different types of play. Why do you think that play might be important to children's development? Think about it as we go to the next slide. So, have you got any ideas? Well, play is so important to children's development because it advances their creativity and imagination as well as their physical, emotional, cognitive, and social skills. Playing is basically their job. There are six types of play that are crucial to children's development. These include unoccupied, onlooker, solitary, parallel, associative, and cooperative play. Let's learn about them in the following slides. The first type of play is unoccupied play. This is the most basic type of play in which children mostly just look around, think, move, and imagine. They're not involved or engaged in any active play. The second type of play is onlooker play. In this type of play, Toddlers just simply observe the play of other children, and they may be close enough to just talk or interact with those children, but they aren't actually playing with others. The third type of play is solitary play. This one's pretty self-explanatory, as it just means that the child is playing alone. The child doesn't usually have much interest in what others are doing and are usually totally immersed in what they're playing. The fourth type of play is parallel play, in which children play with similar toys next to each other, but not with each other. They're typically playing parallel to or beside each other, hence the name of this type of play. Look at the girls in the background of the picture to see a great example. The fifth type of play is associative play, in which children are playing with each other. And although they'll share toys and interact with each other, their play isn't organized towards a common goal. Children are involved in similar activities, but not identical. The sixth and final type of play is cooperative play, in which children begin to unite towards a common goal and use teamwork. The child is a part of a group that has a specific purpose in mind, like creating a piece of art or playing soccer. In this type of play, leaders and followers begin to emerge. So, can you remember what we've learned today? 
we learned about the six types of play, which are unoccupied, onlooker, solitary, parallel, associative, and cooperative play. In your past experience with children, have you noticed any of these types of play? Well, odds are you have because children engage in these types of play naturally as they grow and develop. Let's look at an example. In the following video, see if you can identify which type of play the girl is engaging in. So, what type of play do you think that was? Did you notice how the girl was playing alone and was totally immersed in what she was doing? If you said that the type of play was solitary, you were correct. Let's think about what we just learned. In your future, are there any ways that you could see yourself facilitating children's play and in turn facilitating a child's development? This is a great question to ponder as we wrap up today's lesson. So, I hope you had fun learning about the six different types of play and please let me know if you have any questions. I think the video was uh, quite enough to tell you the details or uh, let's say the video with the, for the visual learner, it was quite enough to learn what are the different kind of play. And did you see there was a child who was quite grown up but still playing alone with himself? So as I said, there, there is no age limit. If like, let's talk, talk about us that sometime we are playing alone and we have, let's say a video game and we are playing alone, there is no one and we are playing with maybe uh, targeting some goals that we have to finish. So we are working with that. So of course, it's, there is no age limit for that. It can be maybe, maybe the child was with the off mood and he would love to play alone. So there is no age bracket for anything. Okay. What's the importance? Promote impulsive control and emotion regulation. It's very important. It actually, one of the benefit is that promote impulsive control. Have you ever seen the impulsivity in the children, right? So play, if you give them blocks or something, maybe in anger, they would throw it. But after some time, you see that while playing, they're yelling over the meltdown. They just turn behind. And look at the things it was given. Uh, they will gradually grow towards that, being attracted, and uh, they start playing. It's a good distraction as well. And let's see. But be careful that it should be something they really like or something that's new for them. They love to explore as I said. Okay. So again, it grows social competence and empathy. That's very important. That Social competence is very important because we have uh, seen children avoid uh, interacting with others. They are not socialized. Maybe those who are living in nuclear families, we have seen that. And uh, as maybe a therapist, I would say that uh, when we talk about children with uh, autism, right? In children with autism, what we see, they are playing alone. So maybe, and sometimes maybe create their meltdown as well. They have tantrum as well. Best idea is to ignore it and leave it for it. After some time, you'll see I'm talking specifically about the child who is on meltdown. So leave them for a while and let's see how they react. So of course, and when they play with their students, uh, sorry, their um, classmates or their friends, what you see that they have developed empathy. How empathy? Let's suppose a child is playing and the friend got hurt. Maybe he fell down while jumping or jumping castle. They or the group of children were jumping and they were jumping on the jumping castle and the other child fell down. You see that rather than keep on jumping, one child or maybe the whole group would come forward and help out the child who was fallen down. This is what we say the empathy, that feeling the pain for the Maybe you'll see the two or one or two of the ch uh, children over there, they would start trying to, or they would make faces, right? This is what we call empathy. All right. So, of course, being uh, socially, they are not only social, but they were developed in their empathy level as well. Teach life lessons. That's very important. Teaching the life lessons. They learn after falling what happened. Maybe the stroke was wrong. Maybe he was jumping on the edge. 
and we say, oh, the child fell down. No, it's fine because that part has given him some kind of a lesson. And they learn from each other, like we learn from each other. So the next is strengthen relationship with the caretakers and peers. It's not about, about only the caretakers, the parents, the teachers, the siblings, the grandparents around them. It's about they build a strong bond with their friends and the caretakers. So please don't ignore the importance of play. The power of play. What is the power of play? It's actually active. It keeps you active. It won't make you sit on the side. But I'm not talking about the games, which, uh, video games where child are mostly involved because I am totally against the screen time. What we see, the children who are more into screen, they will not go into the fresh air. The screen time is supposed to be cut down if you're giving your uh, a lot of screen time to your child what you see that they are less socialized they are less active they are avoiding communicating with people maybe sometime we have seen that the speech has been delayed or you would see that we don't know why especially they are using the mobile and youtube there are unwanted videos are there which are not good for your child and which you would like to just forward it so think about it less of a screen time more of an active child adventurous and risky of course they would love to have adventure if they if you provide them like take them to the park uh, there's a jungle gym they are jumping on that and climb on that climbing what happened they are learning they will fall down they might fall down but it's okay let them learn because this is how they will learn adventure and risk in life and uh, I must say that taking up challenges and risk, it's okay because this is how you find your opportunity. Communicative, of course, as I said, that it helps you communicate, building vocabulary, learning new words, communicate with others, talk with others, know about what others' uh, perception is. They talk. They can talk about anything. Some things they are learning. Maybe uh, there was a group of children I was sitting by, and I saw they were communicating with each other. And what they were talking, they were talking about the, the upcoming test or assessment. They were saying they were asking each other, "Okay, tell the spelling. Tell the spelling." And they were like the whole group. This is how they learned the spelling. So it's uh, if you talk about communication, yes, it was communication as well. Enjoyable. I'm sure nobody is going to deny that it's really enjoyable. That play is really enjoyable and it keeps you engaged. Involved. It keeps us involved as well. Because if child is involved, it means they are learning. For me, not involved in screen time, but involved in the play, it means they are learning. They are up to something great. Their imagination is running on a white horse. So let them explore with the power of play. Meaningful, of course. If they are, you think that that the play is meaningless, no. Not any of the play, not a single play is meaningless. Every play has a meaning. Maybe you will see that they were doing something, and you thought that it was a meaningless thing, and they made something which I can understand, but it wasn't for you. If you go to the child and ask them, "What did you make?" they would say. I made a dinosaur. I made, a, I made my school. That was my art. But for you, it was nothing. But think about the child. His imagination was this and how he put on his imagination. Sociable and interactive. Of course, it helps you interact with other people as well. It keeps you social. Uh, and of course, it has been said that those children who are quite away from children or avoid uh, social gatherings etc to let, uh, take them to the parks as like being a trainer I would say that take them to the park and let them interact with other children as well it's totally fine at least once a week you should have a family time where you all are playing with something amazing I know one of my students love playing Uno as well 
So sometime I have to keep Ono, Lego, blocks. We wow. recently made a doll house out of pattern and it was amazing. Symbolic must have some symbol behind. It's something which we don't know, but the child knows. Try to ask them. They would love to talk about their structure or their uh, end product. Therapeutic, yes. Art and play is called as therapy as well. It keeps you away from your anxiety, your stress, and keeps you engaged. So yes, it's therapeutic as well. Voluntary. It doesn't need everyone, anyone to be involved. It's totally voluntary. It's uh, It comes out automatically. It's not pushed. And please be careful when we talk about structured and un unstructured play. Structured play is something where you are, uh, uh, like you are the asking the child what to build but see that what child is want to um, play what he wanted to make so it's voluntary as well and structure plays are i would say that less demanding than unstructured play unstructured play helps child improve their uh, cognitive uh, development and um, cognition skill as well communication skill as well and their speech as well ask them and they would explain you with the words with the help of word that what did they mean down the memory lane now i want you all to go down the memory lane and think about your favorite play or toy which you still love I'm giving you one minute and taking a break for a while. So by the time you can think about the favorite play or toy which you still love to play. And parts from those who are here can just share their views about it. You can unmute yourself and answer my question. Can you unmute yourself and answer my question? Beenish Fatima. I would love to hear from you. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? My favorite play was basketball and I still love to play basketball. Uh, but after kids, I can't even have time to play. You should take out time for your passion, for your childhood. That was, you said still love to play. The child is learning with you. Yeah. I, Let them explore. I would love to see that. <laughs> totally fine. That's how they interact, right? I'm sure you can learn something. Maybe uh, you'll ask your child. What is, uh, take I take time for my kids. I take them to the park and uh, run with them and take swings with them. I still play with them, but uh, uh, I haven't played basketball since so much time. Yes, go for it. Ask your child what's his favorite play or toy. I should ask the child. Yeah, yeah. The boy sitting next to your child, right? Yes, yes. Both the boys are near me. Their favorite toys, cars, cycling. Uh, they love to play cricket as well. That boy's favorite. Oh, you sixer. That's great. So you're going to play with that? I couldn't hear your voice. Sorry, Sorry I couldn't hear you. I said that he I said it's Chakka Can you hear? <laughs> yes. Audible? All right. Uh, I heard uh, he's, uh, she's, oh, she's listening. Audible? All right. So, uh, and if you ask me, I mean, still I would love to make the dollhouse. That was my thing. Like, uh, the favorite play is still maybe blocks and the dollhouse. 
still I asked my school, would you make something that girl said I want to make a Elsa's castle. I said, oh, the boy said I want to make my school ground out of carton. That's a good use for if the like we are heading towards summer vacation. So you can go for that. Uh, playing in sand is also very good for kids. Okay, now let's come to the art, which is our second part of after the play. You have seen children scribbling first. They start with the scribbling. So, Binish, what do you think about art in early childhood? May I know your profession? Are you working? Yes, I am. Teacher. All right, that's amazing. Green Island. Double row. Uh, yes, I'm teaching Green Island School, uh, Maths and Islamic, two subjects at a time. I've just joined school yet. Uh, it's been nine months only. Um, and I love arts and crafts, and uh, I feel that painting is very good for kids. Uh, but uh, I didn't get that much time for painting and all. But I try to uh, make uh, kids with something arts and crafts like this. Oh, if you can see, that's great. Yeah, I can see. Uh, uh, we made in Ramzan as well, Ramzan Mubarak, and then Eid Mubarak with glitters, and uh, it was all done by the kids. So I love art and crafts too. <laughs> Have you ever tried to painting? It's not inculcate math and art together, or math and play together. Have you ever think about it? Uh, I have done with my kids, but in school, I'm making such activities for my uh, school students hmm. so they can learn maths easy. Maths with arts will be make their maths maybe possible, but I'm trying my best. Palal to bahut busy school mein chal rahe papers ho rahe to usi ke kamon mein. So it's just yeah, it's too busy right. these days. Baaki ke painting mein mujhe pasand hai, lekin mein maths ki wajah se I don't do. Or ye ke mera jo bada beta hai, he is eight years old. So starting mein he was having an anger issues and all. Then I asked someone, uh, a counselor, what should I do for it? Uh, so uh, he told me to uh, do some painting with him. So I tried at that time and I was not doing any job. I was a whole housewife and a mother. So I tried, but because of mess, <laughs> I really avoid. Uh, I, like, I should not avoid. Uh, Look at the picture. Can... Look at the picture. It says you should not avoid. Okay, let's think about yes. the picture, Binish. What the picture says? Yes, art and early childhood both uh, has a good connection. Not only early Mother. childhood, but we are age as well. If you ask me, would you have seen the mandala yes. art? Okay, so if you see the yes, child, yes, I have seen. There for like pushing the hands, so it's of course about the fine motor skill. But can you see she is giving yes. pressure? her feet and of course it's going to uh, like work with the leg as well the thighs and everything when a child is giving pressure or we are giving pressure up while sitting it actually strengthen our muscle thighs legs so here we talk about the no. fine, not only fine motor skill but the gross motor skills too it's not yeah exactly but in July <laughs> you're going to... yeah I yeah definitely I will give them time a lot of time inshallah i mean an art i know it's um, tough as such i mean math se math se as such i mean you as such to koi issue nahi lekin jaise ki hum log park jate to sand area mein khelte hain to wo kapde aapko pata hai ki kitne zyada messy hote hain lekin us pe mujhe koi issue nahi hota aur main inko khelne deti hu but my small child has an asthma issue to avoid they can just put their hands on the wall after painting. <laughs> that that could be really messy. Yeah. yeah but my uh, uh, small one has asthma issue, na, so I avoid playing in sand na, because of him. So right. I, like, I love to take them to sand areas and all. I agree here. We need to avoid while an individual is suffering with asthma. Yes. Next slide. Different perspective on art. 
we actually went to different people or different professionals and we asked their perspective or their views on art. Educator, they said that uh, art encourages fine motor skills like your fingers, your hands. These are your fine motor skills. That's why we see if you give crayon, I'm talking about always give a thick crayon. When you are giving to a child who's new to uh, like uh, writing, the pre-writing thing is to give them thick crayon and ask your child uh, to do something. Like let's give them with a paper, of course, and avoid uh, them going near to the wall because they are amazing at art. They could do anything on the walls. Avoid that. And then you see the wonders happening. What they do, they would scribble it. That scribbling is not meaningless. They are working there with their fingers. They are working with their fine motor skills. Their bones are developing. You know, it takes seven to eight years to develop the hands. I mean, fully grown. And what we tell children, look at your writing. The handwriting is bad. Or the parents come to the teacher and say, look at their handwriting. We need to work on the handwriting. Or maybe sometimes teachers work on handwriting. Think about the hands which are not even fully developed. What do you think about it? They can give you that amazing writing which has uh, like a, a sort of a printed thing. Oh no, it's impossible. So just let them explore that. So fine motor skills, neutral de uh, neural de uh, development as well. That's about brain. Of course, because they are again thinking, they are, their brain is engaged. It's not empty. They are not sitting just idle. They are working. The development is overall when they are working on art. And problem solving abilities that it can be used effectively to teach and understand other key subjects. All right. So here it's for you, Binesh. Other subjects such as reading, writing, math, and science. That was specifically for our educators as well and mothers as well. Let them do it and they would show you how they would love to learn. You will think that what are the uses of art, but you there give them math and exercises there and giving them crayons or colors or paints and you'll see they will show that what they are going to do with it. Sometimes you don't have to like be pre-planned. Just sit and they would do wonders for you. Therapists, like if you talk about the therapists, counselors, psychologists, they tell us that art is a value group because it allows children to process their world. When they are processing, they are indulging in their own world, right? So sometimes, of course, when you have seen your child being like uh, um, sleeping and they got scared while uh, during the dream. So why? Then they will wake up, you'll ask what happened, right? They will tell, no, I, mama, I saw a giant, I saw a ghost, there was someone chasing me. And even we ourselves see that, right? So what happened? One of my students, no, one of the parents came to me and said that my child is like, uh, he is too much into like uh, bed wetting and he sees like or a horror dream, he said that somebody was chasing. I asked, first question was, how much is the screen time? What kind of videos he watched? But no, the screen time is very little and uh, it's not too much of screen time. So I said, have you ever tried asking him to draw something what he sees? Then uh, she says, no. I just asked the mother that, ask the child to draw that thing, whatever he sees can be anything now he the, the child drew that thing which he used to see in the dream and there was something then the mother i said now mother ask me what to do next i said just ask him what is that child said, was the dinosaur what was it doing it was chasing so the screen time was less and there wasn't no mobile phone or too much of tv okay what happened they the child watched when they she uh, went in depth the child said okay we watched movie at school or video clip about dinosaur. So this is how we uh, allow children to process. Now watch that specific movie with the child or clip and tell them amazing the animation movies are there on YouTube, right? Now the control is in your hand. This is the time I would allow you for the screen time because it's in parents' presence, right? Now the 
tell the child that cartoon of the dinosaur. Now they are going to enjoy that. The, the fear would gradually come out. You got the idea? What was the thing child was scared about? To deal with sometimes scary emotions in a safe way. Like I said, like nobody asked them, nobody pressurized them, nobody uh, bothered them or pushed them. They just sit alone. They uh, He drew something which was like scary for him, not for us. And the mother then went in detail and told, uh, mentioned and told the detail that they don't exist anymore. They uh, were finished million years ago. And why they were finished? Because humans were supposed to come down on the earth. Or maybe there was a big earthquake or something like that, which brought them an end. And then later she talked about other extinct animals as well. All right. So this way you can give the idea of uh, extinction. And the endangered species, you are working the child's development process too. And because it gives them critical sensory inputs. Now the sensory, have you, uh, we, when we talk about ABA therapy, we talk about the sensory issues as well. Have you ever seen children, uh, sometimes issues with loud voice, music, um, certain textures, certain foods? Um, Specifically, again, talking about children on spectrum, ASD, right? So they have issues with certain textures. The shirt tag would hurt them, or maybe they wouldn't like to play with sand or maybe slime and dough, which we love, which other children would love. The same ASD child would be playing with that. So each and every ASD has a different, um, let's say, uh, traces or different ideas right and they have different things which we don't know so you can't compare each and every child or even your sibling you can't compare the siblings with each other every individual is different artists tell us that art is important for its own sake the importance of art is that it is important for itself as well as a source of beauty and expression Go somewhere and uh, think about a world where there's no garden, no trees, no flowers, nothing. And it's just a barren land. Nothing colors, no colors. Even the sun is not there, the cloud is not there. It's just a barren sand there, barren land, or you're walking on a sand. What do you think about that world? So I think that world won't uh, fascinate you, right? So it's a source of a beauty. When you see, we, are, we draw what we draw. Mostly we have seen that drawing scenery or adding colors. By the way, just add on the thing. In early childhood, we avoid giving children with a black crayon or color. Because it is said to me that when you see the child is picking up black color again and again, it's, uh, it's a hint towards the anxiety thing. So try when they're taking out the anxiety. Remove the black color. Every time remove the black color, do not add the black color until unless they want to complete a picture. A bigger child who want to complete a picture and they want to color with black. But if they are using the black color a lot for a huge picture, for a first even they you just gave them to color it and what you notice that the child was again and again using it. This is the time you need to be aware of. So remove the black side of there. As a source of beauty and expression as well as simply for the process of creating. Just for the sake of creating something different. Not kids. Can you tell me, Beenish, what the kids think about art? Have you any asked uh, any of your kids that what do they think about art? How they... Uh, express when you give them colors or paints? Uh, my younger one is interested in arts. Uh, an elder one avoids arts. And uh, you should tell about the black color. No? So uh, at some age, it was every time using black color. Then I talked to someone and uh, she told me the same thing. So I, so I avoid, uh, I tell him not to use black color. He can just uh, but, but he likes only when I am sitting, then he is doing art. Otherwise, the little one is at me. Okay, mama, please give me colors. Mama, 
spare from our clients. He's almost a beast still. Uh, he, uh, I'm just taking meeting. She, uh, he asked me to uh, give scissor. Can I do some cutting? I said, yeah, go ahead. Uh, and then uh, asking me, can I watch TV? <laughs> so both have some differences. Uh, younger one loves art. I don't know. I, I'm not. I don't know. 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 Obviously, it's psychology. So, both are different. Younger one loves arts. Okay, can you see? I mean, you must have seen that smile, the big smile when you'll give them him colors or paints. Yeah. Like, the, yeah eyes, the twinkles in the eyes. That's amazing. Yeah. The laughter. That's yeah, good. he just loves paints and crayons and everything. And, uh, and during Ramzan, they went to Madarsa. They get so many paints, crayons, and they were like very happy. So many arts and crafts items. Amazing. That's great. So that was idea. So your child told you that kids tell us that art is fun and activity they enjoy. Of course, he was yeah. telling, I love art. That's an activity yes. that's what I'm enjoying. Now let's yeah. come to the parents. Parents tell us that art is vital to their families because it keeps everyone engaged and happy and helps with this uh, with the sometimes difficult transition of faith. We've seen child is coming to a school, coming from a school and tired. Then he will sleep for a while and then he wake up. Or maybe you have went to mom's place or spend a night or somewhere else. Then you come back after a trip maybe. And you'll see that child is upset. So try giving them art, art material, art supply, paint or crayons or anything. You'll see they automatically pick up the color or even if I keep pencil and uh, paper or colors in front of you, automatically, un it's voluntary, I said. Unknowingly, you'll pick up and start drawing or coloring or just scribble something or doodling, do the doodling thing. Just to, just for the sake of like, and when you see it, you must have done something. You must have do something amazing. And so when it's difficult transition, try giving them paints maybe or crayons. Right, because uh, if child is coming tired from school, giving them arts again, removing the black thing, talking about the younger children, can work wonders with them. Try doing when they are high school, when they are transition time from sleep time, maybe from taking uh, like bed. If you are taking your child to the bed by eight o'clock, try giving them seven forty-five. Give them a crayon and that, and ask them to draw something. Or ask child, like, what we are going to do. I'll automatically remember that time to sleep and he will draw that. So the transition which was difficult to give, putting them on bed will become easier. Let's watch the video. <laughs> Art can have a great impact on child development. Art can be a great way for children who may have a difficult time communicating to express themselves. Children who may not have the ability to speak or say exactly what, what it is they want may be able to paint a picture, to depict their feelings, to tell you something. And in that sense, it's great for, for parents to afford children the opportunity to use art whenever they can and use different mediums, paint, crayons, markers. It could be all sorts of things and, and children might thrive on that. Another great thing that art can do is for older children, especially ages six and seven, can really be great with self-confidence and self-esteem. When you have a child who may feel down on themselves, for them to be able to paint a picture and have this work of art that they created that's their own, that they can feel proud of, will be a wonderful way for them to feel great about themselves and to instill the self-esteem and confidence that they need. So in short, Art can be a wonderful way for your child to be able to express themselves, to communicate non-verbally, as well as verbally, because they'll be able to, maybe they'll be able to tell you what they've drawn. And it's a great way for them to feel proud of the work that they've done and to instill self-confidence in them. That I think it was quite obvious that the, what the art is actually for children and how it works. Okay. 
why we talk about art and especially in early childhood. What are the benefits of art in early childhood? Art promotes creativity. They'll become more creative. Like Venus, you're talking about you give your, uh, crayons to your child and believe me or not, one day after a year or two, you'll see the child whenever he will start going to school. If it's not school going, he will start doing art in a better way. You would be doing, enjoying art in school as well. So do not avoid that. Art encourages mutual connection. It's like mutual connection. It connects with you each other. Maybe you have seen that if you love art, automatically you will attract with the other person who loves art. And uh, uh, it's like connecting with each other. Children were doing, maybe you will see that the other child would take his paper and crayon and go and sit next to him. We have already watched the video where the two girls were sitting together parallel. That's a parallel play. And they were actually painting. So it was only not only the parallel play, but the art skills was there. The art was there going on with the girls or early childhood or not early childhood, even let's say as a children. Art builds fine motor skills. I said it earlier, it's about fingers tips. So of course, it when they work, they in their whole thick crayon or crayon, they are working like this. They all five fingers are working, they are involved. Scribbling is a precursor to writing. That do not think that if they are scribbling, they are just scribbling on the paper or scribbling on the books, which you have given, of course, always try to give them something extra which is used and not in use. So you'll see that they would, they would scribble. Those who are not into writing, they are early childhood, they would just scribble. So actually scribble is not meaningless. It is they are learning how to write. So that's why we so gradually we start giving them lines which are straight or curve or wave or a zigzag. So we are helping them to go towards the writing by giving them crayons. Art develops problem-solving skills. If there's a problem in their life, you have seen that they would draw it and while drawing, they would write down something. And because you're sitting up alone, so they will come out with something. You'll see there are many children in class who were just doing, like we think that they are doing, doing nothing and just sitting and uh, scribbling. They are not sitting alone or they are with their art. They are not sitting alone. They are sitting with their brain active. Their cognition is active now and they are thinking about any problem. Maybe that was in class and it actually helps not only kids but adults as well. Art helps kids understand themselves and their world. Like I earlier said that the child who is there into arts, what he is doing? He is actually learning about it in their world. What's going around? They'll see, show them the pictures. Sometimes we, uh, the children who are non-verbal, we show them the picture. We ask them to draw something, paint something, or maybe the painting of the things which are around them. We show them so this. This is what we call pack, uh, pack, picture exchange communication, right? So here child is communicating through the pictures. Again, I wouldn't, uh, I'm talking about the children who are non-verbal. So they are communicating through pictures, right? So uh, themselves, they understand the world. So we give them the pictures of things around them at home, at school or at the area they are, at the therapy center they are. So it helps them understand uh, themselves. Sometimes we just ask them parts of the body. Okay, what's the part of the body? Now you're working on their communication skills as well and uh, uh, building their vocabulary too. Art is connection. It connects you. It connects you with nature. It connects you with your creator. It helps when you draw. Sometimes you'll see that you're, mostly you'll see that people are drawing. There are many artists who are more towards nature drawing. So there's a connection between them and the nature. They are connecting. And child, if child is drawing and they're coming to you and giving you something, it means child want that connection with you. So be proud of it. Next slide. Let's, that's the last slide. So I want you all to take out your paper and pen and draw to heel. 
I'm giving you five minutes. You can take your paper and pencil and because a little bit of, let's say I'm not an art therapist, but let's say draw to you. Any, anything which makes you happy or sad, let's draw it together. Venish, I'm sure you're drawing. Uh, yes, yes, I'm drawing. Dan, would you like to share the picture yeah. with us? Okay. And tell a little about the art, uh, the Can thing which you have drawn. Uh, just uh, keep me on the camera. To... Just explain it. Just I explain just it. Love... I just love nature. I love clouds. I love the sea. I the water. The dark the is there. No, fish, it's fish. Okay, it's fish, right? Fish and trees with some cars and after some leaves are falling down. Uh, and it means that rain. some birds are okay. flying. It's a love nature. I feel fish some seaside or some birds, sea rain, and it's fish. I Any anxiety and just so water, it's really water, it's rain or seaside. I just love sea. That's great, that's great. So it means uh uh what's the feeling behind drawing this? I don't know, I just feel so happy. And after also, drawing what do you feel? Do you feel do you feel better after that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But uh, oh, drawing I can see the little one. That's yeah, you. sure. Hello. Hello. How are you? Say hi. What's his name? Hi. Hi. What's your name? It's Yamal. Yamal. Oh, that's me. TK? The with us? Mama ke saath par hai. Yeah, final papers are near. Oh, I. This one? He's so young. Oh he he, uh, he dropped the draw for me. Is this oh. opossum? <laughs> my uh, God. He loves drawing. Young woman loves drawing. What did he, he draw? He cut the paper. Animal. It's opossum. That's for Mama. Yeah. Is this for Mama? Yes. Yes. Did he makes a lot of cards. My cupboard is full of cards. 
<laughs> with love letters my god that's cute they express themselves they connect with you right as a mother uh, you have a wonderful job and my elder one is not uh, expressive he even don't hug me till i te- tell him to hug or ye pura din bas he wants hug and kisses and i'm just fed up bas i don't want more <laughs> that's i <laughs> know so what it needs to be forced to hug you or kiss you they would say like rub it and i say what is this and when i'm not attentive they would say i came here to hug you but you're not interested i said what my my children are yeah. my daughter is 23 years old and my son is 18 so they are all grown up stop yeah you do all some things avar for me i would love to see your drawing awesome you want to draw something please you you like can you jo aapke dil mein hai wo aap draw kare anything mai batao aapne mere liye anything kya bana ye batayein aapko acha maybe draw heart 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 yes yeah try stand over here no please uh, <laughs> he's coming <laughs> He went to bring something. Oh, that's cute! <laughs> I don't know what the active parts were. Ah, uh, maybe his box. <laughs> no, he's bring red color <laughs> to draw oh, hard. Oh my God, I would love to see. Jaise bhi aata hai, jaise bhi aata hai. It's okay. Oh. Hard kaise dikhta hai? हार्ट कैसा दिखता है बनाओ आपको कैसा दिखता है हार्ट आप ऐसे बनाओ यू कैन राइट एनीथिंग फॉर मम्मा लिखो भी या you have to open up spelling 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 chhod de don't worry about spelling mummy aaj ki spelling mein carry spelling nahi likhni anything you can write mamma ke baare mein likh do anything don't worry about aapke baare mein kya likhoge jo aapke dil mein aapko aapko kya lagta hai mamma ke baare mein wo likh do aapko kya lagta hai mamma ke baare mein wo likh diye keh rahi hai आप क्या रोज कार्ड में क्या लिख कर देते हो हाँ आप मम्मा क्या लिख के देते हो कार्ड में सो ब्यूटीफुल यार गुड आपको तो आता है सब आता है ना आपको मम्मा इज गोइंग पेस्टेड ऑन हर कार्पेट राइट राइट एनीथिंग एनीथिंग uh mashallah i have noticed something that uh, uh, he do a lot of art that make uh, her studies also very good he is mashallah uh, secure 94 95 in yeah. schools so somehow art has studies right yes i feel because uh, the same my elder one is not used to art and he doesn't do till i force him to do any coloring or may i sit and make cards so he is just interested na and her results are not that up to much because he sometimes uh, uh, even uh, studying he can, he, picture, like, he can sit with a big chart paper and you all of you all family members can sit together and paint this is yeah that's a good thing he is tried? also sensitive he cries a lot if uh, i just scold him and look uh, what he has made show please okay. yes very nice ab kya banao ab kya banao go and learn <laughs> She's okay. a, he's asking what should I make? I said, now go and learn. <laughs> Papers are very near. Okay. 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 Okay.
I can understand. I end of the day, I mean, <laughs> heading. Wow, so what? That's amazing. Yeah. Come here. So good at art. What is she, she saying to you? Talk to her. She's saying, wow, it's very beautiful. Say thank the you. The amazing. Welcome. Good job. Uh, he's suffering from an ear uh, and uh, throat infection since yesterday. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's like I can't listen. <laughs> He's having ear, ear pain. What a chap, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. I can make a heart from my hands. Say, say, say heart, I can make a heart from my hands. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Let's ask if you give any time without drawing. Bye bye. Bye. Say bye. Nice. <laughs> it's amazing to interact with them, right? They are always ready to talk. It yeah. is because I still, I mean, of course, I'm in touch with, the, with my field. I'm in touch with students and children all the time, even adults. So I love interacting more with uh, children rather than adults. Yeah. We're heading towards uh, the last slide. There are no seven wonders of the world in the eyes of a child. There are seven millions. There is no limits. For us, there are seven wonders on the, in the world, right? But so, for a child, there are millions. Maybe what they have made that's wonder for them. Maybe they are, keep on adding on their wonders. Maybe they built was the wonder for him. Or maybe somebody else built it. They would say that was wonderful, right? So... Their uh, wonders keep on coming, keep on adding. This is that's why we said that play is something which actually uh, helps child with anxiety, stress, any kind of uh, communication problem. So art and play do not uh, set your child back when they are doing this thing because there's uh, nothing as the uh, like. When you say it's meaningless, no, it has meaning. It has meaning. You just need to explain that. Thank you so much, everyone. Venus, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. I love the session. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a nice time. Thank you. I also had a nice time with Zavar. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now I'm going to end my session and I'm sure you can now uh, check for the wonders. What are the wonders for your child? Go and find out or do let us know on our page where the video is on and tell us the wonders about your child. What do they, they think about wonders about them? And maybe you can take a picture and post it there if it's uh, possible and we'll be really happy. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Nice weekend, everyone. Daphis. Daphis.